Okay, so we've done the kick drum, so we'll move on to the snare drum. We've got two microphones on the snare drum, one on the top and one on the bottom. The snare drum, because of the actual way the, the drum is, uh, you've got the snare on the bottom, it's quite difficult to capture it just with one microphone on the top. Sometimes people just use one on the side. Um, two microphones is a good way of doing it. The one thing that we'll have to watch though is the fact that the microphones, one, if you've got one on the top and one on the bottom, they're going to both be listening to either side of the waveform. So you have to make sure that uh, they're either in phase or that we correct the phase of one of them. So first we'll listen to the snare top. So straight away, it's, it's not a bad sound actually, uh, but as you can hear, it's not really got the, uh, the crack of the snare. So we'll listen to the snare bottom microphone. And you can already hear there's a lot more of the rattly sound of the snare. Um, but too much rattly sound, so we can't get away with just that. So we're going to use a combination of the two. So what we're going to do is, uh, just going to listen to them both. Uh, and we're going to flick, flick the uh, phase. So that's out of phase on the bottom. I suspect uh, the type of microphones they use are actually already out of phase with each other because uh, they're actually in phase with each other without me change, changing the phase. But we always check and see what sounds better. Uh, just going to quickly listen to and get a quick sound on the snare top. I don't tend to EQ snare top microphones very much just because they pick up so much of the rest of the kit. So we're just going to have a quick listen. What I probably will do is just take out a little bit of the, the, the real low of it. I'm going to use the high pass filter for that. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of top. And once again, sweeping the frequency to find the bit where I want to cut and boost. And I've added a small bit of top and I've done it on a shelving. So I'm going to boost all the top from in this case I've boosted at just over 2.5k. So you can see that's 2.5k and I've just boosted a tiny bit there and it's switched to shelving. I've high pass filtered at about sort of 60 hertz just to get rid of any. Just quickly listen to the snare bottom. I quite like the sound of that, actually it's quite good, but what I do want to do is tighten it up, so I'm going to insert the, uh, the gate on it. So I'm just going to listen to the key. This is the bit I'm interested in, this is the real top bit. This is what the key to open the close the gate is actually listening to, is that high frequency. So I don't want to listen down here because that's, that's going to start triggering off the bass drum. I'm going to just listen to this small bit here. Slow the release down so it's just going to capture quickly. Uh, I'm going to try the punch setting which I haven't done before. And I'm going to put the other snare channel in. So that's with the punch setting in. Uh, I don't particularly like it. It's, it's more punchy than I want. So I'm going to go back to the non-punchy setting, which is a bit more sort of uh, reasonable sounding. Because he's doing a lot of kind of, uh, he's doing rolls on the snare drum. It's, in, it's not really a heavy hitting kind of rock thing. It's a bit more delicate. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of quite happy with that. Uh, I'm not going to deal with any reverb for that at the moment. I'm going to just quickly go through the rest of the drum kit. 